students and welcome to the lecture on wireless communication systems. After the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain wireless communication systems. Understand rays and wavefronts. Describe electromagnetic radiation. Explain wave attenuation and absorption. Understand terrestrial propagation of electromagnetic waves skip distance. Describe microwave and satellite communication systems. Let's start with a brief introduction to wireless communication systems. Wireless communication is one of the most vibrant areas in the communication field today. While it has been a topic of study since the 1960s, the past decade has seen a surge of research activities in the area. This is due to a confluence of several factors. First, there has been an explosive increase in demand for less connectivity, driven so far mainly by cellular telephony, but expected to be soon eclipsed by wireless data applications. There are two fundamental aspects of wireless communication that make the problem challenging and interesting. These aspects are by and large not as significant in wireline communication. First is the phenomenon of fading. The time variation of the channel strengths due to the small scale effect of multipath fading, as well as larger scale effects such as path loss via distance attenuation and shadowing by obstacles. Second, Unlike in the wired world, where each transmitter-receiver pair can often be thought of as an isolated point-to-point -point link, wireless users communicate over the air and there is significant interference between them. The interference can be between transmitters communicating with a common receiver, between signals from a single transmitter to multiple receivers, or between different transmitter-receiver pairs. Now we will talk about wireless communication systems. Wireless communication, despite the hype of the popular press, is a field that has been around for over a hundred years, starting around 1897 with Marconi's successful demonstrations of wireless telegraphy. By 1901, radio reception across the Atlantic Ocean had been established. Thus, rapid progress in technology has also been around for quite a while. History. The first wireless networks were developed in the pre-industrial age. These systems transmitted information over line of sight distances using smoke signals, torch signaling, flashing mirrors, signal flares, or semaphore flags. An elaborate set of signal combinations was developed to convey complex messages with these rudimentary signals. The introduction of wired Ethernet technology in the 1970s steered many commercial companies away from radio-based networking. Ethernet's 10 Mbps data rate far exceeded anything available using radio, and companies did not mind sending cables within and between their facilities to take advantage of these high rates. The current generation of wireless LANs based on the family of IEEE 802.11 standards have better performance, although the data rates are still relatively low and the coverage area is still small. Wired Ethernets today offer data rates of 100 Mbps and the performance gap between wired and wireless LANs is likely to increase over time without additional spectrum allocation. A few decades ago, I would not have believed that when walking in the forest, I would be carrying with me a dynamic map. A map that not only displayed the terrain, but also revealed in real time my location in the landscape. As you know, this is now reality and the inventions that make this possible, the Blackberries, iPads, and other wireless devices we carry with us, represent an incredible evolution in wireless technology. Most of us never wonder about how this stuff works, we just use it. So in this video I will attempt to explain some of the basic science behind wireless communication and show you how to construct a very simple wireless transmitter. 
Let's start with a quick look at wired communication. In this system of communication, metal wires, often mounted on poles, are used to carry electrical signals from one town to another. This technology evolved rapidly in the 19th century. You can often see the remains of these early communication systems running along beside railway tracks. The process was simple. A switch, called a key, was used to control the flow of electricity on the line. Samuel Morris proposed a code of dots and dashes, short and long pulses of electricity, to represent letters and numbers. This, of course, is Morris code. The dots and dashes were detected at the receiving end, either as an audible signal or as marks on a paper tape. Telegraph keys were much more sophisticated than my simple example, and key operators were capable of sending and receiving code at very high rates. Many amateur radio groups still have members capable of transmitting and receiving Morse code. Systems like this that use Morse code are called telegraph communication systems, and during the latter part of the 19th century, a worldwide network of cables appeared, including the first transatlantic cable, a communications cable joining Newfoundland to Ireland. The next step in the evolution of communication occurred in 1876, when Alexander Graham Bell was granted a patent for the telephone it was now possible to carry voice on wire cables. The next leap in the evolution of communication occurred with the discovery of electromagnetic radiation, a discovery that made wireless communication possible. If you've been studying electricity, you will know that electricity is a flow of charged particles, usually electrons. If you connect a conductor, from the negative to the positive terminal of a battery cell, electrons will start to flow. This is electricity, electrons flowing from minus to plus. It turns out that starting and stopping this electron flow creates pulses of radiant energy. These are electromagnetic waves. In the latter half of the 19th century, German scientist Heinrich Hertz successfully detected these waves. Further investigation revealed that these waves are part of a spectrum of energy that includes visible light. The full spectrum of energy represented by this electromagnetic radiation spans everything from extremely high frequency gamma rays and x-rays to very low frequency radio waves. Visible light is in the center of the spectrum. All electromagnetic radiation travels at the speed of light. Let's investigate low frequency electromagnetic radiation. You can create and detect electromagnetic radiation with this equipment. A AA 1.5 volt battery, 2 meters of insulated small gauge wire, a 15 ohm resistor, and an AM radio. Make sure the radio is set to AM, not FM. Advantages. Communication has enhanced the way we convey information quickly to consumers. Working professionals can work and access internet anywhere and anytime without carrying cables or wires wherever they go. Doctors, workers, and other professionals working in remote areas can be in touch with medical centers through wireless communication. Urgent situations can be alerted through wireless communication. The affected regions can be provided to help and support with the help of these alerts through wireless communication. Wireless networks are cheaper to install and maintain. Disadvantages. The growth of wireless networks has enabled us to use personal devices anywhere and anytime. This has helped mankind to improve in every field of life, but this has led to many threats as well. Wireless network has led to many security threats. It's very easy for hackers to grab the wireless signals that are spread in the air. 
it's very important to secure the wireless network so that the information cannot be exploited by the unauthorized users. Here we will discuss electromagnetic polarization. Electromagnetic waves are comprised of an electric and a magnetic field at 90 degrees to each other. The polarization of a plain electromagnetic wave is simply the orientation of the electric field vector in respect to the Earth's surface. If the polarization remains constant, it is described as linear polarization. Horizontal and vertical polarizations are two forms of linear polarization. A wave is horizontally polarized if the electric field propagates parallel to the Earth's surface, and the wave is vertically polarized if the electric field propagates perpendicular to the Earth's surface. The sense of polarization for circular and elliptical can be described as left hand. If the thumb of the left hand points to the direction of propagation and the fingers point to the direction of rotation. Right hand. If the thumb of the right hand points to the direction of propagation and fingers point to the direction of rotation. Rays and wave fronts. When light enters or leaves glass at an angle to the normal, it changes direction. This is called refraction. If one makes a piece of glass in this shape, then one can control what happens to the light that passes through it. One can bring the light together to a focus. The word lens comes from lenticular, meaning shaped like a lentil. Electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is a term used to describe a stream of energy-bearing particles that travel outward from an electromagnetic source. The energy in these streams can vary extensively in power and is measured by the electromagnetic spectrum. This type of radiation can be beneficial, harmless, or extremely dangerous to humans, depending on the source, level of radiation, and duration of exposure. Man-made sources of electromagnetic radiation include X-rays, radio waves, and microwaves, although some natural sources exist as well. Microwaves and radio waves are used by humans to power machines and increase communication abilities. Cell phones, radios, microwave ovens, and radar all create electromagnetic radiation. Spherical wavefront. If a point source in an isotropic medium is sending out waves in three dimensions, the wavefronts are spheres centered on the source. Such a wavefront is called a spherical wavefront. The wave surface of a non-moving harmonic source is a sphere, with the source at the center. In the case of longitudinal waves, this is a direct result of the wave equation. One may admit this is also the case for transverse waves, where the overall situation is no more central symmetrical. Inverse square law. The power density becomes smaller as the distance from isotropic source increases. The total radiated power is the same, but the area of the sphere increases in direct proportion to the square of distance from the source. Therefore, the power density is inversely proportional to the square of distance from the source. This relationship is called inverse square law. Let's talk about wave attenuation and absorption. When waves propagate through free space, they spread out, resulting in reduction of power density. This is called attenuation loss, and it occurs in free space as well as the Earth's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere contains different particles which absorb electromagnetic energy, causing reduction in power, called absorption loss. Earth's atmosphere is not a vacuum, and it consists of atoms, molecules of various substances such as gases, liquids, and solids, which are quite capable of absorbing EM waves. As the wave propagates, energy is transferred from the wave to the atoms and molecules, and this transfer is known as wave absorption and is analogous to 12R power loss. 
Once absorbed, energy is lost forever, and it causes reduction in power density. Optical properties of radio waves. The free space behavior of propagation is altered by optical effects such as refraction, reflection, diffraction, and interference. Refraction. Electromagnetic refraction is the change in direction of an electromagnetic wave as it passes obliquely from one medium to another medium with a different density. Reflection. Electromagnetic wave reflection occurs when an incident wave strikes a boundary of two media and some or all of the incident power does not enter the second material. The electromagnetic wave reflection at a plane boundary between two media. Diffraction. This is defined as the modulation or redistribution of energy within a wave front when a density it passes near the edge of an opaque object. Diffraction is the phenomenon that allows light or radio waves to propagate around corners. Interference. Radio wave interference occurs when two or more electromagnetic waves combine in such a way that system performance is degraded. Interference, on the other hand, is subject to the principle of linear superposition of electromagnetic waves and occurs whenever two or more waves simultaneously occupy the same point in space. Terrestrial propagation of electromagnetic waves skip distance. Electromagnetic waves traveling within Earth's atmosphere are called terrestrial waves and communications between two or more points on Earth is called terrestrial radio communications. There are three modes of propagating EM wave within Earth's atmosphere. Ground wave propagation, space wave propagation, and sky wave propagation. Ground wave propagation. Ground waves are the electromagnetic waves that travel along the surface of the Earth and are also called surface waves. Ground waves must be vertically polarized and the changing electric field induces voltages in the Earth's surface which causes currents to flow that are very similar to those in a transmission line. Space wave propagation. This includes radiated energy that travels in the lower few miles of the Earth's atmosphere. Space wave includes both direct and ground reflected waves. Direct waves travel essentially in a and this propagation with direct waves is commonly called line of sight or LOS transmission. Direct space wave propagation is limited by the curvature of the Earth. Skip distance. The skip distance is the distance from the transmitter to the point where the sky wave first returns to the Earth. The skip distance depends on the wave's frequency and angle of incidence and the degree of ionization. The skip zone is a zone of silence between the point where the ground wave becomes too weak for reception and the point where the sky wave is first returned to Earth. Now we will talk about microwave communication systems. Microwave communication is the transmission of signals via radio using a series of microwave towers. Microwave communication is known as a form of line of sight communication because there must be nothing obstructing the transmission of data between these towers for signals to be properly sent and received. Microwave communication can be analog or digital. Microwave communication takes place as both analog and digital formats. While digital is the most advanced form of microwave communication, both analog and digital methods pose certain benefits for users. Advantages of microwave radio communication. Radio systems do not require a right-of-way acquisition between stations. Each station requires the purchase or lease of only a small area of land. Because of their high operating frequencies, microwave radio systems can carry large quantities of information. 
High frequencies mean short wavelengths, which require relatively small antennas. Radio signals are more easily propagated around physical obstacles, such as water and high mountains. Microwave systems require fewer repeaters for amplification. Distances between switching centers are less. Underground facilities are minimized. Minimum delay times are introduced. Minimal crosstalk exists between voice channels. Disadvantages of microwave radio systems. The electronic circuits used with microwave frequencies are more difficult to analyze. Conventional components, such as resistors, inductors, and capacitors, are more difficult to manufacture and implement at microwave frequencies. Microwave components are more expensive. Transistor transit time is a problem with microwave devices. Signal amplification is more difficult with microwave frequencies. Microwave technology has been used for communication purposes since the 1930s. Its longevity is strong evidence that it represents a robust and established method for connectivity. Despite the proliferation of fiber optics, microwave communication systems offer very high reliability. The industry standard is to design to five nines, or 99.999% of reliability. In addition, systems usually pay for themselves within 6 to 12 months and therefore provide a rapid return on investment. This is a typical roof-mounted antenna system located in the Boston Mass area. While this particular antenna is parabolic shaped, antennas can vary in both shape and size and can be as small as 1 foot to as large as 16 feet in diameter. Antenna size is dictated by many factors including path length or distance, reliability, and sometimes by FCC requirements. The first question is, why consider microwave? In today's competitive environment, all companies need to optimize the costs associated with conducting their business. They are focused on dollars and return on investment. When you compare the typical cost for a terrestrial carrier leased line versus the cost of a microwave system, the results are astounding. As mentioned, ROI is usually measured in months when a microwave system replaces leased lines from the telephone company or other carriers. Another reason to consider a microwave system is that in many areas of the country, a business can't get a high-capacity circuit. Either the fiber in the ground is oversubscribed, as in many urban areas, or fiber doesn't exist in rural and many suburban areas. As you can imagine, the incentive for a common carrier to build communications infrastructure in a sparsely populated area doesn't make good business sense. Reliability is always an issue with high-capacity connectivity. When a customer has a mission-critical application or hundreds of subscribers, circuit failure is simply not an option. Microwave systems not only provide highly reliable performance, but they can also be combined with terrestrial circuits or even configured as redundant systems to enhance capacity and fail-safe reliability. Most businesses want to be able to monitor how their circuits are performing. Private microwave systems offer this unique capability by providing full disclosure on system operation which allows you to understand the what, where, when, and how status of your critical communication links. Every so often, a business may have a requirement to launch a high-capacity circuit on very short notice. The good news is that most microwave systems can be installed with only a couple days of notice. A real plus with unlicensed microwave is that deployment requires no FCC coordination, and systems can be installed and removed as the need requires. This affords your business room to maneuver and the latitude to do things quickly. While the actual technology can be somewhat obscure, an understanding of the basics is all that's necessary to offer a solution. Microwave is either licensed by the Federal Communication Commission, the FCC, or unlicensed. I'll explain the differences in a moment. Systems can be applied to either a point-to-point -point connection installed on buildings, towers, bridges, or water tanks in order to gain line of sight from one end of the link to the other, or in a point-multipoint -point configuration, sort of a hub-and-spoke architecture. Both architectures operate alike. Point-multipoint -point implementations are effective in campus-like environments, where a central building communicates with multiple remote buildings. Mesh is another configuration often utilized in municipal deployments, and it is exactly what it sounds like. The components are arranged in a mesh, all points connecting to all other points. This type of mesh design grows organically, 
so as you add to the system, each node is automatically joined to the other existing nodes. Mesh has an additional benefit in that the network is self-healing. If you lose a node, communication is automatically re-established through another routing. Laser systems, while not a microwave technology, are sometimes used for connectivity. It's not desirable for distances over a couple of hundred feet, nor in harsh weather conditions such as heavy snow or rain. Microwave radio link. The transmitter includes a modulator, mixer, and microwave generator, as well as several phases of amplification and filtering. The modulator may perform frequency modulation or some form of digital modulation, such as PSK or QAM. The output of modulator is an intermediate frequency or IF carrier that has been modulated or encoded by the baseband input signal. Microwave radio repeaters. With systems longer than 40 miles or when geographical obstructions block the transmission path, repeaters are needed. A microwave repeater is a receiver and transmitter placed back to back in the system. The repeater station receives a signal, amplifies and reshapes it, and then retransmits it to the next repeater or terminal station downline from it. Satellite communication systems. A satellite is a celestial body that orbits around a planet. In other terms, a satellite is a space vehicle launched by humans that orbits Earth or another celestial body. Communication satellites are man-made satellites that orbit the Earth, providing a multitude of communication services to a wide variety of consumers, including military, governments, private, and commercial subscribers. Satellite elevation categories. Satellites are generally classified as having a low Earth orbit, or LEO, medium Earth orbit, MEO, or geosynchronous Earth orbit, GEO. LEO satellites operate in the 1 GHz to 2.5 GHz frequency range. The main advantage is that the path loss between Earth stations and space vehicles is much lower, thereby resulting in lower transmit powers, smaller antennas, and less weight. Satellite orbits and orbital patterns. Satellites are classified as either synchronous or non-synchronous. Synchronous satellites orbit Earth above the equator with the same angular velocity as Earth and therefore appear to be stationary and remain in the same location with respect to a given point on Earth. In circular orbit, the speed or rotation is constant. With elliptical orbits, the velocity of a satellite is greatest when the satellite is closest to Earth. Geosynchronous satellites. They are referred to as geostationary. It refers to the movement of communication satellites where the satellite circles the globe over the equator in a movement that is synchronized with the Earth's rotation. Because of this synchronization, the satellite appears to be stationary and they may also offer continuous operation in the area of visibility. Geosynchronous orbits are circular. Some of the advantages of geosynchronous satellites are Geosynchronous satellites remain almost stationary in respect to a given Earth station. Therefore, expensive tracking equipment is not required at the Earth stations. Geosynchronous satellites are available to all Earth stations within their shadow 100% of the time. The shadow of a satellite includes all the Earth stations that have a line-of-sight path to the satellite. Switching from one geosynchronous satellite to another as they orbit overhead is not necessary. Consequently, there are no transmission breaks due to switching times. Disadvantages are An obvious disadvantage of geosynchronous satellites is that they require sophisticated and heavy propulsion devices on board to keep them in a fixed orbit. High altitude geosynchronous satellites introduce much longer propagation delays. The round trip propagation delay between two Earth stations through a geosynchronous satellite is typically between 500 milliseconds and 600 milliseconds.
Geosynchronous satellites require higher transmit power levels and more sensitive receivers because of the longer distances and greater path losses. A high precision spaceship is required to place a geosynchronous satellite into orbit and keep it there. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Wireless communication is among technology's biggest contributions to mankind. It involves the transmission of information over a distance without help of wires, cables, or any other forms of electrical conductors. A digital radio can transmit a continuous bit stream, or it can group the bits into packets. When a wave travels freely, it has electric and magnetic field vectors perpendicular to each other and to the direction of propagation. There are both natural and man-made sources of electromagnetic radiation. The sun, for instance, is an intense source of radiation that can have both positive and negative effects on living things. Radio wave interference occurs when two or more electromagnetic waves combine in such a way that system performance is degraded.